Okay, so I tried to film this literally, like, not even that long ago, and my mom fucking walks into my room to feed the cats, and, um, my whole rig fell down, and the foot of my little light doodle broke. So that's great. Everything's going great right now. We do not love this. We do not stand. So today we're here to do the book review of Before I Let You Go by Marjorie Kamp. I'm not gonna say that again because I don't fucking know how to pronounce her name. I didn't want to read this book because all I wanted to do was read The Collected Schizophrenias and The Goldfinch, which I just bought. I had a bad dream that I read The Goldfinch last night and hated it, so now I'm like really anxious to just get started. I guess I'll start off by like telling you what this book is. Um, Before I Let You Go is the ace book for us. Great. Uh, it fills the ace category. The main character's best friend is Pan, and there's also a gay relationship of like minor characters towards the end. So we can basically start off with that, and that the book is a YA novel about mob mentality. It's really interesting, um, but it wasn't necessarily great, and I didn't like it was fine. My dad's coming home and he doesn't know about my arm tattoo and I'm not about to let him know. So I was explaining the major themes of the book. All of the scenes were fairly repetitive, which bothered me a lot. Um, the book is about this girl named Corey who used to live in this tiny town in Alaska called Lost and her best friend dies and she goes back and she realizes that there's some fishy things going on with the death of her friend. So that's basically where the story picks up. And it doesn't really move or change in any way. So I gave this book a three out of five stars because I did read it really quickly and it could have been worse. But it wasn't like a bad book and it wasn't a good book either. It's going to get more spoilery, but I'll let you know when it's like actual spoilers. Corey goes back to her old town where her friend Kira died and she realizes that like nothing is the same in the town and that like she's now considered an outsider even though she used to be a part of the town and that her friend Kira who died, who was hated by everyone in the town because she was bipolar, is now was now beloved by the town and so she's like what the actual fuck and starts investigating basically here's the spoilers the town realized that she was good at painting and then thought that she was a prophet so then they wouldn't let her take any of her medication and moved her into this abandoned spa at the outskirts of the town and cut her off from contact with anyone else so these are all the things that Corey discovers and basically it's just kind of this circular thing of like her asking new people in the town like what happened and them being like you are mean for leaving even though your mom got a job in Canada so of course you were moving to be with to be with your mom but they're just so rude about it and like it doesn't make any sense and I don't understand and I'll never understand What's interesting about this book that I did like is that the main character really has, like, a male voice. Her narrative voice reads like a guy. Like, in the same way that, like, male voices are in literature, that's how her voice felt. So it felt very unnatural for her to be a girl, but I liked that element of it because I really identify with, like, male narrative voices so like that was very appealing to me like I said it was super circular it was like the same conversations over and over again and the author did play a little bit with like different storytelling methods so like there were letters that Kira had sent or had not sent to Corey that were part of the story and then you also have like some bits where it's like written like a script which is nice but like other than that, it was pointless. Uh, there was a lot of mystical elements and I, it would have been so much more satisfying 
for Kira to have actually just been hiding and not actually be dead, but she is dead and the town killed her, which is kind of the whole point and where the mob mentality comes in. I mean, it's really only a three because it was unsatisfying. There was nothing like new or revolutionary in the story other than that like the character was ace but it didn't add anything to the story for me and i think if you read this book you'll also agree with that that like her identity didn't matter because she like wasn't i don't know she wasn't fleshed out enough for me and neither was kira and neither were any of the other characters they were all kind of introduced like we're supposed to supposed to just kind of like accept that they're there and that they have like different personalities, but they all seemed like the same character and I didn't get anything beneficial out of the other characters at all. There's also a part where the story could have been way more of a murder mystery and it wasn't and it just kind of like seemed to float between genres and ended up being like genre-less in like a pointless way. Disappointing. So that just generally goes with our theme of all Ace books being extremely disappointing. And I just think maybe that's a fault of Ace identities in general, which makes me sound like a jerk, but I think Ace identities don't, asexual identities don't lead to the sort of like interpersonal tension that is a good element to a story or a book. So I think maybe that's why all of these stories are kind of flopping. Um, except for um, that Mackenzie Lee book. That was really good because she had a real drive for something else and her she got sidetracked. And so like there was multiple, like there was a subplot that was getting in the way of the main plot moving forward, whereas this one didn't have that. And so it was just kind of like, there was elements missing in terms of tension, in terms of like the main goal getting achieved and the main goal was never achieved, which can be good. But in this one, it was just kind of like, I already knew it wasn't going to be achieved. So it felt kind of pointless. That's why it would have been nice for Kira to not have been dead and to have that sort of be like, oh, a new element and have Kira's being alive, maybe bring in some kind of like, new tension would have been cool and so it just kind of was disappointing next month we will be reading gender outlaws um which i left at my pittsburgh apartment so that book is just a lot of vignettes um true stories um from different queer writers and comic artists and things like that um with all different kinds of perspectives and it's very good i've read most of it already um because I was using it as part of a course, um, because I chose to use it as a source material for an essay that I was writing. I didn't expect to be into nonfiction as much as I am now, but I am. I just, it won my heart. What can I say? That is that. This is the book review. Let me know your thoughts on the book. Please join the Goodreads group. No one ever talks in the Goodreads group, but I wish you would because I love Goodreads. Thank you guys for watching. All of my socials are down below. Support me in any way you want to, and I will see you next time. Mama Mia, here I go again.